Hello everyone. So, I've put together a viewer for 3D volumetric data in Godot. Uh, this uses the marching cubes algorithm, and uh, it's a shader that constructs a mesh uh, around your 3D data. And uh, yes, it did say shader. This is using GLSL shaders, uh, compute shaders under the hood, to give us a nice fast compute time for when it builds this mesh. So I just want to go through and show you how to use it, how to install it, and then go a little bit into the details of how the marching cubes algorithm works because it's kind of fascinating. All right, so if you'd like to see more, keep watching. To install the add-on, you can get it from its GitHub page. Uh, come down here to the releases section and click on the zip file to download the zip file that contains the add-on. Uh, once that's done, you can unzip that and go to your project and you're going to want to copy everything in the add-ons marching cubes folder or marching cubes viewer into the root of your project so that you get a directory structure just like this uh, then come over here to project project settings go to the plugins tab and make sure that marching cubes viewer is enabled uh, then you can once everything has been installed, you can add a viewer to your 3D scene by clicking on the plus button, uh, typing in March in the filter up here, and selecting a Marching Cubes Viewer GLSL from the drop down. Uh, then just click on it, and you can come over here. There's only three parameters. Uh, the image file is going to be a zip archive of your um, 3D volume. At the moment, there isn't a good file format for just 3D data, so this is going to be a zip file of PNG images or JPEG images or uh, pretty much any image format that Godot is able to handle. So let's go into the art folder. Let's pull up our iguana file. Let's open the zip file, and it's going to process it. And there is our layered data. And uh, let's just rotate that a little bit so that it's pointing the right way. Whoops, let's make that negative 90. Okay, and you can see it's a little bit blocky. You can adjust that by changing the cube resolution. It can bring that down so that you use fewer cubes or all the way up so that it uses more. And uh, you can see that the data here is a little bit noisy, so let's not put that all the way up. Let's bring that down a little bit. And it can take a little while for the um, processor to work. So you might have to wait a second or two for it to completely update. Okay, that looks like a decent resolution. And the other thing you can adjust is the threshold. And what the threshold does is it determines what the density cutoff is for inside versus outside. So you can think of your volume as having a whole bunch of different densities with the softer tissues being down towards the bottom here and the harder tissues being up at the top here. And what this is doing is it's just determining exactly where the cutoff is between the inside and the outside. So every cell in your volume that is below a certain value is going to be inside of this generated mesh, and everything above that value is going to be outside of your generated mesh. And you can swipe this back and forth to grow and shrink between the hard and the soft parts. The idea behind the marching cubes algorithm is you want to find the intersection between the inside of your volume and the outside. Now your volume is made up of a lot of tiny little points, uh, each of which represent density. And by changing the cutoff value, you can change exactly where the density value is for the inside versus the outside. Then uh, all you need to do is build a mesh that puts little dividing planes in between all the inside points and all your outside points. To build this separation mesh, we're going to go through our volume one cube at a time, which is to say uh, we're going to consider groups of eight voxels that represent density uh, sort of arranged in the cube shape. So these are all next to each other, neighbor to neighbor. And we're going to 
uh, if a, a voxel is above our cutoff, we're going to consider that to be outside and we're going to paint it black. And if a voxel is below our cutoff, we're going to consider that to be inside and paint that white. And uh, when you look at this diagram here, each one of those vertices represents the inside versus outside of a neighboring group of voxels. Now all we need to do is come up with the mesh that goes inside of it. Now some of these cube colorings are going to be similar to each other, which is just a way to say that if you were to rotate this cube around one of its axes, uh, you're going to get basically the same shape but uh, on a different side of the cube. So uh, if you go through and you build the separation planes for all the 256 possibilities, you end up with a set of 22 distinct ways to put uh, planes in between the vertices uh, so that you uh, separate them cleanly, the insides from the outsides. And uh, if you look at the diagram here, uh, we're using the red to indicate the inside of the mesh and the blue to indicate the outside of the mesh. So you can see we've uh, got all these cutting planes set up so that the blue is facing the black vertices and the, uh, the red is facing the white vertices. And that's the Marching Cubes viewer. Uh, I hope you find this useful. Uh, this was quite an intense project, a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be, uh, especially getting into the uh, GLSL code. But uh, in the end, I think it turned out pretty neat, and uh, I hope you find it enjoyable. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.